the back streets of Lusaka, a ceremony born more of desperation than superstition. One of the locals has fallen ill. But this is a neighborhood which simply never sees conventional, well-trained doctors, let alone one with a bag of modern medicine. Moses Kaleya is the Chinyanga in this slum corner of the Zambian capital. He's a witch doctor. His patient, Thomas, 33, is married and, unusually in this explosively populated corner of southern Africa, is without children. He's also without a chance of survival. Thomas is a dying citizen of a doomed community at one end of a deadly hot zone the most AIDS-afflicted place on earth. It's not hard to understand why these destitute souls turn to faith and magic. I think we are now at a stage in, in, in Africa, in particular in southern Africa, where we, we think the epidemic is, is out, of, out of hand. This is the fate that awaits them. A few suburbs away at Lusaka's mortuary, a daily procession of death. All day, every day, men, women, the old and the young, even babies, struck down by AIDS. As soon as one body is taken away to be buried, another is brought in. This is the end of the road in a 2,000 kilometer tour of tragedy across three African nations. A journey along a highway which carries the killer virus to tens of millions. It is, without question, the biggest medical disaster the world faces. Or is the world simply turning its head? Because highways are the lifelines of a continent. And for long-haul drivers like 26-year-old Abednego Chinoy, the days are long and lonely. Like women, mostly they like truck tra drivers. Why is that? I don't know. They think they've got too much man, I don't know. Shanty settlements, villages and roadside markets line his milk run along Botswana's highway number one. And at each and every stop, AIDS has taken hold. What's wrong with the women? Ah, these days they got too much disease like AIDS. See? Most of the truck drivers are dying from AIDS. Do you know many truck drivers that have died of AIDS? Ah, many of them. Really? Yes. Abednego couldn't hope to know the precise toll, but then neither do governments or agencies. The scale of the problem is beyond their capacity to measure, let alone treat. So where do the truck drivers go to drink? By the bar, after that, that, that building. What is known, though, is that this town, Francistown in Botswana, is the capital of the AIDS pandemic. In the bars, and there are many, it's easy to see why. Prostitution is rife, it's cheap and easy, and no one seems to bother with protection. 
I think most of the people they don't understand that AIDS is there. They don't understand. They think AIDS may be something like a lie, there's nothing like that. If you ask many people, some of them they tell you there's no AIDS, there's nothing like that. But what do they think it is? Like I told you, like witchcraft of some sort. It's just a matter of minutes before the soliciting begins. Esther is well known at this bar, one of the highway's $5 prostitutes. She sells unprotected sex, and if she isn't already HIV positive, it's probably only a matter of time. She was telling me she wants to, she wants to go to Zimbabwe. Now she's like, no, she's no, she doesn't want to go to Zimbabwe. She wants to sleep with me. She uh, likes truck drivers too much. I <laughs> know what she was saying. Yeah. Abednego is married. He has a young child and says he doesn't stray too much. Then if I sleep with her without a condom, I'll drive up as far as Palape. I'll get another one. I'll spread my AIDS. Maybe she's got AIDS. I don't know. Go to Mahalape. I spray it again. Capes, I spray it. I come to my house. I spray it to my wife. Ah, I see. In a month, I think you can spread AIDS to more, to more than 30 people. But the truck drivers and travellers at the Triple S bar aren't all as diligent as Abednego. On a busy night, each of the dozen or so prostitutes here may have sex with three or four men. This scene is repeated the length of the highway. It's difficult to conceive of a more effective way of propagating this killer disease. Of the, what we estimate, 30 million people living with HIV in the world, 22 of those million are living in Africa. You can see what an, uh, what an impact that will have on the, uh, on the whole society, on the economic development, on, on schooling, on everything. Sunday morning, and as the last stragglers leave the bars, on the other side of Francistown, there's a more sombre homecoming. Kabiso Ben was unmarried, 30, and supporting a child. To survive, she turned to prostitution. It killed her. Although no one will confirm the cause, AIDS is a shameful end. We don't know what has happened here. We don't know. People are always ill. There's uh, diseases, they call it AIDS. So sometimes we hear the people who said, this thing is caused by this, this is AIDS. This is a town of 50,000 and yet it's burying its citizens like a big city. 20 funerals a day at this graveyard alone. In Francistown, one in four adults are HIV positive, one in every two pregnant women. Reverend White looks on helplessly, knowing that poverty, ignorance, carelessness, and a fatal disregard for fact combine to kill his people like nothing else. They don't want these condoms, they, don't, they dislike it. They say this thing is not good for them. Some of them, they said, when they use it, they found that they, their kidneys are bad, and some said when they use it, their stomach is just expanding. They find that... I think one of the reasons why the response has been so difficult and, and, and slow uh, is that, that HIV AIDS is a is disease which affects people so much emotionally, uh, leads to so much denial as it is a combination of, of sex and death. And there are very few examples in, in diseases in history where, where sex and death are so much closely linked.
Travelling with the flight of AIDS north to Zimbabwe, we find that the death toll is so impacting the adult population, it's brought a crisis in the workforce and changed the way that bosses employ staff. It is affecting the workforce, the people who are productive, the 20 to 30 age group. Tawanda Morongwe is the factory manager at the Vitafoam plant in Bulawayo. He's watching as his skilled workers die around him. And those are the people who are going to the clinics and they are having to go back again repeatedly being diagnosed of all the AIDS-related diseases. And that is killing on our work time and productivity. The trouble with AIDS is that it is in itself a fiscal war that we're waging. And uh, whilst we may be used to military encounters in Africa, we're not used to this type of warfare. Now when they hire here, it's with a practical fatalism, the cold certainty of epidemic death. Peter Harding will draft as many as 20 to ultimately do the job of just one. If a worker at any skilled level was working for you in 1990, at the present moment, you would probably need six um, to take his place, because obviously uh, there'd be other attrition amongst that six. Uh, but he can go up as to as many as 20 to one. Across town in Bulawayo's slums, 14-year-old Sibong Kosium Hlanga is doing the job of two adults, her mother and father. Yeah. My mother was sick for a long time. She was very, very sick. She was not eating, drinking, or even walking. They took her to the hospital and she passed away while we were at Solus. So we came here for the burial service, but I did not see her. Why didn't you see her? I was afraid. God bless our food we eat. Amen. Um. Sibong Kosi is one of a new generation of African children that will emerge in the years ahead. Millions who will never know a childhood under the care of parents. Yes, I wake up so early and sweep the yard. Even sometimes I clean the house and the toilet. Then go to school. From school, I just start to prepare food. And then it's bedtime again? Yes. Doesn't leave much time for playing. I know. <laughs> She's smart and studious. She's already a head girl at school and hopes one day to be a teacher. But her chances of success are slim. Her future is mortgaged to her family. Two brothers, a sister and an ailing grandmother. Is this your favourite verse? Yes. What does it say? Mark 10, verse 14. But when Jesus saw it, he was greatly displeased and said to them, Let the little ch children come to me and do not forbid them, for of such is the kingdom of God. And what does that mean? It means that God loves the little children. So, oh. All the adults who do not like their children to go to church have got sins. So, little children are loved by God. But she'll soon have cause to question that one of Sibonkosi's siblings has the symptoms of AIDS. The mighty Zambezi River marks the border between Zimbabwe and Zambia. But nature's boundaries are no barrier to the passage of HIV through Africa, nor is age. He's still, he's still sick. Uh, he's still sick. 
In Zambia, AIDS has slashed life expectancy by 25% to just 47. It's pretty bad. The baby also has lost weight. But if you're new to the world here in Lusaka's main children's ward, life is measured in days and weeks. We have looked at the antibody prevalence among the women who are delivering at the university teaching hospital. It's about 30 percent, so the three times more during the last 10 years, 89 to 99. Many of these babies have been born with HIV. One in five will not leave here alive. Despite the daunting and often futile job of caring for these tiny lives, the head of paediatrics here sees a glimmer of hope. Professor Butt is something of an optimist. We are at the peak of this epidemic because for the last two or three years, the HIV prevalence among the, the pregnant women who are less than 20 years, these are the teenage mothers, it's going down. So that is an indication that these are the young girls and the boys, they are, I think they are aware of the problems and they are careful. Can you tell me some of your story? I'm a widow. Uh -huh. I lose my husband this year on the 10th of January. In the thick of all this despair, a young Australian volunteer. Deborah Boswell counsels the AIDS widows of Zambia. Many of these women contracted HIV from their husbands and now face a slow death in the slums of Lusaka. Fatalism is, is rife. Okay, so if people are not going to die of AIDS, they're going to die of malaria, they're going to die of meningitis. Uh, life expectancy in Zambia is 43. Okay, so people expect to die. And so it's not actually a threat to be talking to people giving messages about the fact that AIDS kills or using fear tactics when there actually is no fear. In a country where AIDS education is patchy at best, Deborah is assembling personal accounts as a warning to others. In Zambia, they argue that there's about 95% awareness. The levels are at about 95%. But what you're seeing is that that actually doesn't translate into behavior change. Um, and there's a lot of reasons for that. A lot has to do with, I feel, gender, some to do with traditions, some to do with cultural practices. And a lot to do with resources and priorities. Welcome to the 11th International Conference on Sexually Transmitted Diseases and AIDS in Africa. A lofty title for a gathering of authorities and experts looking for ways to sandbag the AIDS tidal wave and eventually turn it round. What makes this even more tragic is the fact that it is avoidable. We know what works in preventing HIV and in caring for persons with AIDS. But nowhere is the effort strong enough to turn the epidemic back. They've come to Lusaka from all over the world, but perhaps most telling of all is who didn't show up. For all the theories advanced here don't amount to much without some political imperative, and not a single African president is among the delegations. We have all been trying to open up but facing so so much political uh, psychological uh, constraints that that it was uh, that that we have been late and we have been uh, limited in our in our response <laughs> And so, without the prospect of practical medicine, Zambians take solace in their ancient beliefs. If, as Thomas reckons, his illness is the result of a neighbor's curse, then the solution's simple. When witchcraft's the cause, then witchcraft can also be the cure. But Thomas will soon succumb to his illness. Few Africans live longer than five years beyond initial infection. He'll be another statistic in a continent overwhelmed by AIDS. And the tragedy is, the worst is yet to come.